Welcome to our video on using Euclid's formula for generating or creating Pythagorean triples. Now Pythagorean triple, again, all it is is a set of numbers, A, B, and C, like 3, 4, 5, that work out really nicely on a right triangle, where 3 and 4 are the legs of the right triangle, so if I have a right triangle like this, we have 3 by 4, the triple says the third side is 5. And what's nice about these triples, right, with our leg of 3 and 4, the hypotenuse is 5. What's nice about this is that uh, everything's a whole number. And that's what's so wonderful about the triples. And they scale up. So uh, a 3, 4, 5 could be doubled, right, to make another triplet, like a 6, 8, right, or 10. It could be tripled to make a 9, 12, 15. You can even do half increments, like one and a half times. So if I scale it up by one and a half, I can get another triple, like 4.5, 6, right, and 7.5. The idea is that I can use triples to understand triangles. But what, you, what Euclid came up with, and I, I think he invented this formula, although I, I'm not sure, I just know it's usually attributed to him, is a way to generate these. Here's a group of triplets that are beneath 100, so every number is beneath 100. Where do these come from? Well, these are called primitive triplets, right, because they're the most basic of each type. Primitive triplets. For example, with the 3, 4, 5, this, this triangle is considered the primitive triplet for this set because we use it and multiply it by different scale factors to create other triangles based on the 3, 4, 5. So it's called primitive because all of the other triangles in this group are based on it. So how do you create a primitive triplet, right? The 6, 8, 10, that's easy to create if you just double the 3, 4, 5. But where does the 3, 4, 5 come from? What's the connection between that and 5, 12, 13, or other triplets in this list? Well, that's what Euclid figured out. And I'm not going to prove it in this video. I might do that in another video. Here, I'm just going to talk about how to create these. What Euclid said was, um, pick two numbers, like x, and y. And just make sure the two numbers are not equal. And let's say in this case, since they're not equal, uh, let's have x be bigger than y. y could be bigger, doesn't really matter. Just make sure one number is larger than the other. And then what you do is you use those two numbers that you picked and you can make a triplet. The first leg, right, on this triplet will always equal x squared minus y squared. The second leg will always equal 2 times x times y, and the hypotenuse being the longest side will always equal x squared plus y squared. So in this video I want to talk about how to use this formula and why, and, and why it makes sense. The first thing I want to point out is that uh, notice with the, the small leg a over here we're subtracting y squared from x squared. And here with c, which is the hypotenuse or the longest side, I think it makes sense that we're adding. Since we're getting the largest value possible, we want to add the quantities squared. When we subtract them, it's natural to get a smaller quantity. And b, again, is just multiplying x and y by 2, which is not going to result in as large of a value as squaring and adding both, both numbers that you initially pick. right? So it makes sense that this formula will generate the hypotenuse as the longest side. And also, think about it, if you subtract the square of a number from another number, it should give you something smaller than the product of the two numbers in two. And we'll look at why that makes sense. Let's, let's pick an example. So it's fun. I mean, you could pick any two numbers and generate any triplet. But I'm going to show you um, what happens when I pick one and two, the two smallest numbers I can pick. Because one of the prerequisite here is that these numbers should be whole numbers, right? I guess we could talk about how this would change with integers and other numbers. But here, I want to focus on whole numbers. So aside from 0, the first two whole numbers I can pick here are 1 and 2. So 2 will be x, because it's bigger than 1, and y will be 1. And it's okay because 2 is bigger than 1. That's our first requisite. x is bigger than y. So what happens when I pick the first two whole numbers above 0? Well, a will equal x squared minus y squared. So x is 2, so 2 squared minus 1 squared. And that's equal to 4 minus 1, right? Because one, 1 squared is 1, and, and, and 2 squared is 4. And that's 3. So our first length is 3. B, 
well, that's 2 times x, which is 2, times y, which is 1. And what's 2 times 2 times 1? Well, 2 times 2 is 4, times 1 is 4. So our second leg is equal to 4. And with c, well, here we square x, 2 squared, and we add it to 1 squared. 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, 4 plus 1 is 5. So a couple of interesting things happen here. First of all, if we pick the first two whole numbers above 0, we get the very first primitive triplet. So the smallest combination of whole numbers above 0 gives us the smallest possible triplet on this list. And we can mess around these numbers to get the next triplet. Right? Think about what numbers would I use to get 5, 12, 13. Take a guess, plug in the formula, see if it works. The second thing to note is that we just generated a triplet. So this is a right triangle. And also, again, to go back on the relationship with these formulas, if you take 2 squared and 1 squared and subtract 1 squared from 2 squared, so 1 from 4, you get a smaller number than if you take 2, multiply it by 1, and double that. right? Because here you're just making the numbers larger, you're multiplying. Here you're actually squaring, but you're taking away from that with the square of the other number. So it gives you the smallest leg possible. Here with C, right? we're squaring and adding the numbers. So we get the largest number possible.